and our comrades and revolutionaries all over this country to at least <laughs> have a contingency preparation plan for that so that we're not taken by surprise. I'll conclude by telling you two things about that possibility. One, if this is a black and brown youth Arab Spring, the beginning of it, it would be the greatest thing for the Occupy Wall Street movement. Because they're in motion and black and brown youth coming onto the scene, that will tend to move Occupy Wall Street even further in the direction of solidarity with the oppressed, with an anti-racist class struggle. It would be great for the health and survival of Occupy Wall Street. It would be the best thing. I don't think it was a coincidence that the family of Trayvon Martin chose to go to Union Square March 21st, the March, uh, a million hoodies march. They went there because Occupy Wall Street had begun to occupy as best as it could Union Square. And it's the reason why they're going back on Monday. There's a, there's a great fusion of, of forces that are in motion in this, sisters and brothers. Think about it. You know, a lot of people think Occupy Wall Street, particularly its stereotypical young white youth, they're going away. Well, I beg to differ. In my lifetime and in most of our lifetimes, a lot of the white youth that we've seen get politically active, become organizers, have been through the anti-war struggle, to a certain extent the anti-racist struggle. That's been down through, you know, 40, 50, 60 years, Vietnam, more recent wars. I'm generalizing, sweeping unfair generalization. And except for a handful of those who become revolutionaries, like some of us here, for example, Many of those youth who come up, they have a sort of a, a period of activism, but it ends when the war ends or for some other reason, and then they go back to their normal life. And usually for them, if they're in college or if they've got a degree or several degrees, that means they expect that there'll be a place for them in the system, you know, to be privileged and forget about their years of activism and, you know, just disappear into the framework of the capitalist system. So that's not happening with Occupy Wall Street young people because what they found out is that where they used to be promised a future, we've said this and it's worth repeating, <laughs> they're not promised a future anymore. It doesn't matter how many degrees they have and how savvy they are, how internet savvy, how tech savvy they are, you know. Actually, <laughs> it seems that all of that learning, the only thing that they can use it is to make rebellion. And that's good. And just imagine these youth who a little while ago thought they had a future under capitalism that have been shocked into the reality that that future is over, meeting youth who have known for quite some time that they never had a future under capitalism. This is a great meeting. This is a meeting that we should be interested in. This is a meeting that we should try to cement that we should try to facilitate because this meeting deepens a great threat against those who benefit and own the capitalist system. The other thing I want to say about the possibility that this may be an Arab Spring, just the possibility, even if it's a faint one, an outside chance. If there's even an outside chance, comrades, as revolutionaries, we are obliged to take it very serious and try to help it, help it stay alive and help deepen it and facilitate it. Otherwise, how can we call ourselves revolutionaries? This is the stuff that revolutionaries are made of, broadening and deepening the class struggle so that it's, it is episodic, it comes and goes, but on another level, sometimes it's sustainable, especially if there are enough of us there to help it be sustained. Thank you, sisters and brothers.